Hey there, once again, YouTube. I have a few interesting things to bring to you today. First off, we're going to talk about the Stromboli Volcano in Italy, which resides just north. Actually, not just north. I'm probably guessing maybe 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers or so north of Mount Etna in Italy as well. Activity has been ramping up the past few weeks or so. And uh, earlier today, there was a very large very large eruption, and you'll see that in just a second. Dozens, of, uh, dozens, excuse me, of people dive into the sea and trying to escape the Stromboli volcano eruption in Italy. One person died, and dozens of others threw themselves into the sea when a volcano on the Sicilian island of Stromboli violently exploded Wednesday. Massimo Imbessi, a 35-year-old from Milazzo in Sicily, was killed in the eruption and a Brazilian friend who was with him was badly injured. The volcano is known to be active, but the two blasts reported by Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology around 10.30 a.m. local time were particularly powerful and sent ash and embers raining down on the tourist hot spot. It was like being in hell because of the rain of fire coming from the sky. The explosions were preceded by lava spills from all active mouths of the crater, prompting a 6,000-foot-tall high plume of thick white smoke. But there are reports that the plume was much taller than that. Much taller. Um, we're going to move on just real quick, and we're going to take a look at what this eruption looked like. Now, here we are at the YouTube channel, Phobos Planet. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description box below. I just wanted you to take a look at some of the different viewpoints of this eruption. This was after the eruption occurred. Look at how tall the plume is, guys. Look at how tall that is. Let's skip forward to another view of this. Someone a little bit closer, I believe, on the island itself. Yeah, very, very tall plume. Fires broke out, and there's, of course, lava right there. And let's zoom forward just a little bit. Video's kind of loud. And here's from an aerial view of the volcanic eruption at Stromboli. Look at that. Pretty tall, guys. Pretty tall eruption. And activity has been ramping up for quite a while there. Uh, here's another view of the volcanic eruption as well. Again, don't forget to visit Phobos Planet. A link to his channel will be in the description box below. So go show him your support. Now let's move on and just real quick take a look at what the actual eruption looked like right when it happened. Here we are at Amichai Stein's Twitter page, which he's a correspondent at the CAN Diplomatic Desk, Israeli Public Broadcasting Corporation. He uh, caught this on one of the webcams for Stromboli, and you're going to be quite shocked as to what you see. Again, this is from that one Twitter account, and I want you to notice, keep a look right here, and you will definitely see it. Check it out guys look at that I'm gonna go back that is all lava right there guys that is all lava look at that there is literally like a lava bubble Do you see that overtook the entire summit killing one person and injuring one other person as well look at the lava right there you see that it's kind of laggy I don't know why it's so laggy for me right now look at that sorry I gotta play it one more time ready guys Boom! Look at how- that's all lava, guys. Of course, ash came out afterwards. Look at all the lava spewing right down here. Right in front of the webcam. Look at that. Absolutely shocking, guys. Very surprising that the webcam was not destroyed in the process of this, surprisingly. And this caused part of the summit to collapse in on itself. And eruptions are still getting stronger. Look at that. Look at that. Do you want to know what that tells me? Why it looks like a bubble like that? That shows there's a lot of gas being built up within the conduit and possibly the magma chamber itself. And eruptions have not calmed. Eruptions have gotten bigger, actually, since this major eruption earlier today. So eruptive activity is far from over. We could see another major collapse event at the summit. So my prayers are out there for everybody there. And if you live on this island, I'm telling you right now, just evacuate, just to, just in case. I mean, really, if nothing happens, you can always go back and live there. But I'm just saying, please be careful, guys. Please be careful. Look, you see some of the ash plume right here. My goodness. Let's play it one last time, guys, because I find this video very, very intriguing. Look at that. And don't forget to go to Skyline Webcams. They have a lot of webcams for Stromboli on there. And they do a great job at monitoring Stromboli. Many other people have webcams for Stromboli as well. I think it's one of the most monitored in terms of webcams. 
uh, one of the most monitored volcanoes out there, basically. I mean, Mount Etna is very mon monitored with webcams as well. Very, very cool. One last time, guys, because this is very fascinating. Again, my prayers do go out to the families of the the guy who got killed from this. I mean, look at how big those lava bursts are, guys. I mean, those... Look at that. Look at that. Look at how big that is. Sorry, guys. One last time. My God. And just keep your eye right there. Look at all the lava coming down from the sky. Look at that. Absolutely massive eruption. So... Why don't we get, go take a look at some of the seismic data, shall we? There, let's go back. If it'll let me. There we go. See, he's got it right on his tourist account. Uh, excuse me, his Twitter account right there. Let's look at some of the seismic data and see the seismic event caused by this eruption. It's going to be pretty interesting to look at. Okay, guys, here is the Stromboli Volcano in Italy, and we are going to take data from this seismic station right here, ISTR in the IB network. You see it is very close, right on the slopes, right at the base of Mount Stromboli. All right, here we have, uh, about two days ago, the seismic data for ISTR in the IB network. We're going to take a look at some of the seismic data just real fast. Now, I want you to notice something on the spectrogram. It only goes to 10 hertz on the, uh, I believe the data only records up to 10 hertz, but that's okay. That's okay because all seismic activity will show below 10 hertz, of course. Um, all of these that you see right here is not surface noise. I already correlated a lot of these and um, are actually saved images of a few of these correlating them to lava explosions at Stromboli. All of these, that's a lava explosion, that's a lava explosion. That's a lava explosion, and I correlated a lot, of them, a lot of them while watching the webcam. I would write down the time of each lava explosion, download the seismic data, and correlate the times. Now, there is about a 20-second difference because the time on the webcam is a little bit off, but you could obviously tell, like, one time it erupted three times in a minute, right? And you could tell right at that minute mark on the seismic data, you could see three events. So, I've already correlated a lot of this, and there is a bunch of seismic tremor, as you could see, Harmonic volcanic tremor, of course, there should be. There definitely should be when seeing this type of activity. Lava explosion, lava explosion, lava explosion. All of these are lava explosions, guys. Already correlated a lot of it to the webcam while watching the lava explosions. And look at how it just continues. Right here is a very strong one. Here's another very strong lava explosion right here. You can tell they are emergent, just like they should be. Another lava explosion. There's some dominant lower frequencies at the beginning, which is very interesting. And then, let's go forward. So you see how small they sort of look, right? Now, let's go forward. Come on, buddy. Boom! This is the summit collapse and major eruption that we saw earlier today at Stromboli Volcano that you saw a video of. It was this strong. Again, I already correlated the times with the webcam and what was going on there. This is the eruption, the major eruption, guys. Look at this. That is this right here. Look at that. Look at how large that was. The seismic waves from the explosion itself were extremely strong, guys. Very, very strong. Lasted quite a while. Even more. Look at all of these lava explosions. And now I want you to notice something. As of recently... Look at how strong the explosions are now. Look at this. Now, do you see a difference? Before the summit collapse, there's the summit collapse right there. And after, do you notice all of this tremor and all of these lava explosions? Look at all these. They are much, much stronger. Most of the lava explosions prior to this, we're going probably about to 5,000 amplitude count, you know, 6,000 amplitude count. Now look at how, how strong they're getting, guys. This went up to 40,000 amplitude count, 30,000 amplitude count, 20,000. One of the most recent ones was up to 60,000 amplitude count. Very, very strong lava eruptions occurring at Stromboli right now. A bunch of volcanic tremor occurring as well, which is definitely what we should see during this activity. Right here, right at the end of the data stream is the most recent data. As of 7.24 p.m. Pacific time, July 3rd, 2019. And clearly, you could see before the summit collapse... There's the summit collapse right here. As you can see, let me zoom out a little bit. Try to get the whole thing right here. Yeah, look at that, guys. That's the summit collapse. Not all of the summit collapse, but a good portion of it. And I'll show you that in just a second. 
And again, calm before, there's the collapse, and look at afterwards. Definitely a lot more activity is occurring at Stromboli now than uh, before the major eruption that we saw that killed one person. In my opinion, that means that eruptions are not over for Stromboli. I mean, it could calm down in the next day. We should give it about 24 hours. But if this activity, if these strong lava explosions keep continuing like this over and over and over, it's going to continue to destabilize the interior of the volcano itself, promoting even a bigger collapse than the one that we saw today. Because really, having all those eruptions can eat away at the inside of a volcano. And apparently, this volcano is showing a lot of gas associated with these eruptions. So, that is pretty crazy, guys. Alright, guys. So, this is what the part of the summit looked like before the major explosion earlier today. And let's scroll all the way down. That's what it looks like now. Scrolling back up. That's what it looked like yesterday before the eruption. And this is what it looks like now. So, yeah. A good portion of the summit did collapse before and after. Before and after. And it's not just smoke that's really covering this area. A good chunk of the summit did collapse and it's pretty much gone now. And yeah, so it was a pretty major eruption, but we spent enough time on that. Let's move on to something else. And here we are at VolcanoDiscovery.com slash Volcano News, one of the best places to get news on your volcanoes, guys, for uh, ash emissions, volcanic eruptions, stuff like that. Popocatepetl is seeing another 26,000 foot eruption. Guys, it is still getting bigger and bigger. Eruptions are getting more frequent. I think that could be a sign that Popocatepetl, which is right near Mexico City, which I heard has 21 million people in it. It's like, imagine, I know Seattle has a lot of people, over a few million people, um, even down the Tacoma area, all spread out down there, and Mount Rainier is not too far. You know, it'd be catastrophic if Mount Rainier went off. But we don't have as many people here in Washington, Seattle, and Tacoma and stuff like that than they do down in Mexico City. They got way more people down there. And Pueblo Catapetal is like right on the outskirts of a huge major city, which I heard is the largest city in the, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. Or not the Northern Hemisphere. What did that person say? In the Western Hemisphere, I think they said. Please forgive me if I'm wrong on that. I'm just going by what someone told me. And Dakota Volcano still erupting. San Gabriel Volcano still erupting. Still erupting, still erupting. Stromboli Volcano, still seeing strong eruptions. Again, we talked about that. They are getting stronger. It did, the eruption that we saw did not relieve pressure. Eruptions are approaching a bigger one, I believe. And there's a picture of the Stromboli eruption again. Uh, let's keep going forward. There's another picture of the Stromboli eruption right there. Reventador Volcano up to 16,000 feet. Not too big of an eruption, but still erupting. Uh, let's go down. Oh, yeah, don't forget the Mayan Volcano in the Philippines, which I actually know someone who lives near there and who does stop by there from time to time. Uh, there are increasing signs of volcanic unrest. And also do not forget that the Mauna Loa Volcano in Hawaii, it has been elevated to yellow. Uh, and it's currently in an advisory state, which has happened twice, I believe, in 2005. And 2014 to 2018, Mauna Loa in Hawaii did see an increase in the alert level and nothing happened. However, I do not believe it coincided with strong volcanic spasmodic tremor in the mantle plume. And uplift occurring at the Kilauea Summit and the Kilauea East Rift Zone as well. So we got a lot of magma moving worldwide, guys. A lot of volcanic activity. When it was, it was somewhat calm months ago, right? I mean, there were, of course, some large eruptions. But it wasn't as crazy as it, uh, excuse me, as it is right now. It does seem like we could be approaching a good increase in volcanic activity, way bigger than what we see right now. But that's uh, that's just what I'm saying. I'm not going any farther than that. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this website. Going to recent seismic activity reported by USGS, the most recent major earthquake was a magnitude 5.2, supposedly at 10 kilometers in depth in China. Let's zoom into Hawaii real quick. We just had a very small earthquake at Mauna Loa, but of course USGS does not report all of the earthquakes that Hawaiian Volcano Observatory does. If you really want to see the actual count of earthquakes, and HVO actually does a wonderful job at recording all of their earthquakes, USGS doesn't do as well. But it's strange, right? Because HVO is part of USGS, so I don't know why exactly 
they don't report all the earthquakes on this earthquake map here. But if you go to volcanoes.usgs.gov and select either Mauna Loa or Kilauea, you can see in the past week, there are a lot more than what we are seeing right now for the past week. We're seeing 77 reported earthquakes for the entire Big Island of Hawaii in the past week, including multiple volcanic spasmodic tremor events occurring within the mantle plume at Hawaii. But again, if you go to volcanoes.usgs.gov, you can see the number is much, much higher only for Mauna Loa and Kilauea Summit as well. So that's very interesting why that's even occurring. Let's go up to Alaska, which has been seeing an increase in seismicity as of late. Not too far from Anchorage. Anchorage is right here. Not too far from Anchorage. There's a magnitude 4.7 at 59.4 kilometers in depth. A good increase in seismicity near the Purcell Mountains, which in my opinion has been caused by an intrusion of magma. I may be wrong of that, but it's just in an odd location striking in a linear formation uh, from the south and north in this location right here. And I am planning on doing a video on that sometime in the future when I have time. But just know, keep an eye on the Purcell Mountains to see if any seismicity increases at all. We had a few more quakes off the coast right here near the Aleutian Trench. But we saw another big burst in seismicity. And I say another because you'll see in just a second. 62 in the past 24 hours, guys. Let's go to largest magnitude first. Magnitude 5.3, 4.6, 3.4, 3.3, 3.2, 3.0. Multiple threes, a mid four, and a mid five. And multiple, multiple twos. I'm going to say about half of them are higher than 2.0. So we're seeing a good increase in seismicity yet again for northern Alaska. Very, very intriguing, guys. And we'll take a look at the seismic data for this in just a second. A lot of them striking pretty deep. The larger events are striking deep. And some of these smaller events are actually striking a little bit more shallow. You notice that? Smaller events are very shallow, except for this one. I mean, there are exceptions, of course. But very interesting. Very interesting. The, the larger ones are uh, deeper than the smaller ones. Huh. That's very interesting. Makes it sound like something's coming up out of the depths of the earth. Now, let's just look real quick for the past seven days for this location right here. Again, 60 in the past 24 hours alone. 83 in the past week, so seismicity has been pretty calm until the ju uh, just the past day. But let's look at the past year for this area, and you'll see what I'm talking about. In the past year, this is from, this is all magnitudes. As of July 3rd, 2018 to right now, July 3rd, 2019, 7,000, an unprecedented 7,730 earthquakes have occurred in northern Alaska with a big batch right here, right here, and right here as well. Now, look, the, now my computer is going to be a little slow because there's a crazy amount of earthquakes occurring as part of the ongoing seismicity in this location, which started primarily, I mean, there was seismicity here for a while, but it started primarily in August of 2018 with two magnitude sixes. Here, let me go to largest magnitude first if my computer will even let me. Come on, buddy. Come on. Whew, man, too many earthquakes, I guess. It'll go, guys. Just give it a quick second. Get a, give it a swift kick in the rear, shall we? There we go. Notice August. August. July 2019, which I believe this is today's. Yes, today's is the third largest, about almost the third. There, there was one rivaling it in August of that same year in 2018. But again, this started with a 6.0 and a 6.4. It's 60.2 kilometers in depth and about 16 kilometers in depth. Notice right here and right there. And notice how after that, of course, there was seismicity prior to this a little bit. After that, seismicity just blew up in this area. And I was thinking, okay, they're just aftershocks, right? But look at the linear progression. Notice how it's going basically from the north-northwest, or excuse me, the west-northwest to the east-southeast. Notice a linear trend, right? Usually, that's indicative of some type of intrusion of magma. And it does look linear in nature. This down here, I believe to be all connected to the stress that is ongoing in this part of northern Alaska. Could be another volcanic event here, maybe. I mean, there are no known volcanoes, really, in this area. So it could be a brand new type of magma chamber forming. Um, really, I have not seen any low-frequency events much at all in this location. Not really any harmonic tremor or volcanic tremor either. But that doesn't mean something could be trying to break free. In my opinion, 
and, and you know, I'm not a professional. I do believe this is definitely volcanic in nature. Maybe not today's earthquakes, but in my opinion, this is definitely very interesting. I mean, 7,730 events just in the past year for this location in North Alaska. That is a lot, even for tectonic activity, guys. So let me know what you think is going on here. Let's take a quick look at the seismic data for today's events. Here we have C27K, which is a station in the TA network. No location code given, so it'd be dash dash. Broadband vertical. Since it's a broadband channel, I did add a 0.8 hertz high pass filter to the 8th power to get rid of those pesky background micro -seisms. But we can still see some very interesting low frequency activity in the background. Very weak though. Very weak. Very, very weak. But this station is a few kilometers to the north, probably 10 or 20 kilometers actually. But we still will get a good look. Here's the magnitude 5.3 that occurred today. Now, I want you to notice something that occurred literally just seconds before this magnitude 5.3. Notice something right there? That is not a teleseismic signature in my opinion. That does not look like a teleseism. That looks like a low frequency event, doesn't it? It definitely has dominant lower frequencies. And there's the magnitude 5.3. Many, 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 many aftershocks all having high range frequencies. Keep going forward, keep going forward. A lot of earthquakes, guys. A lot of earthquakes. You should have seen it in August. Whew! In August, it was popping all the time. Multiple fours, multiple threes. I mean, it was just off the charts. There were probably so many thousands, maybe even a hundred thousand earthquakes that weren't even reported because really too many earthquakes to be reported. And a lot of them sometimes were probably a little too small. But still, a lot of activity in northern Alaska continues, guys. It still continues. This event right here is very odd. Very strange event. Almost looks like two earthquakes right there. But as you can see, activity is basically calming down somewhat as of the past, I'm going to say past 12 hours or so. So it doesn't look like it's really going to be continuing that much in northern Alaska, but the activity is ongoing. And again, as you saw, there were 7,730 events in the past year alone for that location in northern Alaska. And just a heads up, guys, we did have earthquakes just west of the Cascadia subduction zone. Remember, the subduction zone starts right here. Uh, let's see, we got a one magnitude 1.9 and 5 kilometers in depth within the subduction zone, but it's pretty shallow, right off the uh, coast of Vancouver Island. And we saw just one earthquake in Mount St. Helens, again, June 2019, and I don't forget my monthly update that I did put out on my website. Uh, they saw a large increase in small magnitude seismicity, which was very, very intriguing, actually. Even Lassen Peak on June 11th and June 12th saw a couple low-frequency volcanic earthquakes, which one of the volcanic earthquakes was the largest reported earthquake of the month of June. So a lot of activity going on right now worldwide, guys. Very, very intriguing. Again, not too long ago, less than a month ago, we had a swarm along the Blanco Fracture Zone, which is this location right here, which in the late 90s, if you look it up, the Blanco Fracture Zone did have a volcanic eruption. Some type of volcanic event did occur and can occur along the Blanco Fracture Zone, which is not part of the Cascadia Subduction Zone. But then again, this whole thing is like one big engine, right? One big engine, really. So technically, it can be connected to the forces that are ongoing as part of the subducting process. But... Just saying. All of them happened to the west. 3.1 and 9.6 kilometers in depth. Then we had a 4.1. Another 4.1. And then a 3.7. So not too crazy. Not too crazy. But again, seismicity still occurring on the Blanco Fracture Zone right out there. Going to the world. Okay, nothing really else happened. Now let's go to Yellowstone just real fast. And I'm not going to make a post about this because I really do not have too much time. But we are going to take a look at the seismic data for some of the earthquakes that did occur in the past two days. Zooming in, very interesting, they're reporting a 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, right near West Yellowstone, north northeast of West Yellowstone, actually, uh, right near Maple Creek, between Maple Creek and Hebgen Lake and Earthquake Lake. 10.2 kilometers in depth, 9.6 and 7.8, getting shallower, all occurring within about seven minutes of each other. And there were a few other earthquakes that were not reported as of yet. A few earthquakes, I believe, actually did occur in the Norris area in the past 24 hours as well. So we're just going to take a quick look at that. Also, do not forget, Steamboat Geyser broke a record. I was wondering if it did or not, but YVO did confirm it broke a record in June, guys. Not a, not for one calendar year, 
but it broke a record for one calendar month, erupting seven times in the month of June, with the shortest interval being only three days between eruptions. Isn't that crazy? Eruptions are still ongoing, and we need eight more eruptions to beat the all-time calendar year record, which was set back in 2018, previously set in 1964. All right, here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm with data for, taken from Seismic Station YNR and the WY Network, 0-1 location code, broadband vertical. Since it's a broadband channel, I did add a 1 hertz high pass filter to the data. Notice we have been seeing little teeny tiny quakes here and there popping off every now and then, very, very tiny. But on the 2nd, at about 1938 UTC, there was a slight increase in seismicity near the Norris area. Uh, let's take a look at the PNS wave arrivals. Possibly to the west of Norris. I'm going to say maybe to the west. That's just just quickly looking at this. Probably not at Norris itself, but very close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eh, I'm going to say no more than ten in less than about what fifteen minutes or so. Nothing too crazy. And down here, since some of you may be wondering, right here, this is a tail seismic signature. Notice I have the one hertz high pass filter. It's not shown, right? It's not shown. So. Why don't we take a look, let's go take the filter off, and there it is right there. Some people might go, oh, it's going to blow, harmonic tremor. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not this time, maybe other times. I mean, other volcanoes do show harmonic tremor with some very low frequencies, but let's go to the spectra plot. Always use the spectra plot, guys. Dominant frequencies rest between 0 0.06 hertz and 0 0.12 hertz. Extremely. I'm talking way, 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 way too low at all to be any type of volcanic harmonic tremor. Volcanic harmonic tremor rarely goes below 0 0.5 hertz, which would be right about here, and you don't see anything. This is most likely a teleseismic signature from a global earthquake, and as some of you may know, broadband channels are the best at recording very, very low frequency waves from teleseismic signatures. Moving on. Let's go all the way down here, guys. And apparently, according to YVO, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, these earthquakes... Oh, I'm wrong. Never mind. These earthquakes look like local earthquakes near Norris in the Norris Junction area. Yeah, they definitely look like some local earthquakes right there. I'm going to say it's one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... No more than 10 small magnitude quakes, maybe a few back here in about 10 minutes of a time frame. A few poppings going on a little bit after that. And again, this is on the 3rd right now, actually. A uh, few hours ago, actually. No, wait. Excuse me, that's about 12 hours ago. That was this morning. And here we see a, another increase in seismicity, a rapid fire swarm, which usually we mainly see at Yellowstone Lake, West Thumb Lake, and around Shoshone and Lewis Lake. But we can see it in many other locations of Yellowstone as well. Not too many earthquakes there. I'm not going to do an analysis post about this, guys. I'm pretty busy right now, so that's why I wanted to look at this in the Seismic Program Swarm on the video. And let's just go forward. Very small magnitude quakes. I believe the largest one was this one right here, going to 5,000 amplitude count on a broadband channel, meaning it's pretty small, maybe 1.5 at the maximum. Going forward... Going forward, we do see more quakes have been occurring. Very tiny, but Norris is definitely seeing a small increase in seismicity. That is for sure. Don't know what's going on here. These are very intriguing. Let me turn back on the frequency filter, shall we? Okay. Very low frequencies. Look at that. that now that's intriguing. That is very intriguing. Very weak, but we see them nonetheless. Don't know what the, exactly that is. I'll leave that up to you guys. Oh, look at that. The peaks are kind of sharp with some high frequency tips. Very interesting. So that's pretty much it for right now. Let's see if anything else has occurred since I started recording. I know this video is pretty long, but I have a lot of stuff to cover and very, very little time to do it. Not seeing too, too much else. So again, we had some major eruption at Stromboli. Some volcanic spasmodic tremor events a few days ago. Hawaii, excuse me, Alaska saw a good increase in seismicity. Some large magnitudes, including magnitude 5.3. near the location that has been seeing a lot of seismicity in the past year. Cascadia, or excuse me, just west of the Cascadia subduction zone saw some earthquakes as well. 
And Yellowstone saw some microquakes as well, taking part of a rapid fire swarm in the Norris area, which have not been reported yet. And a few other quakes did hit the Maple Creek area as well. Steamboat hit its all time one calendar month record in June. We only need eight more eruptions to reach the all time calendar year record of 32, which we have to beat 32. So really we have need 33. Um, yeah. So. We might do it, we might not. Just keep an eye out, stay tuned, God bless, and I hope you guys stay safe.